Good evening. Sorry for the little bit of delay. We are using the new cameras tonight, so if you're on Facebook, let us know if it sounds better, worse, whatever. So I was trying to, you know, today when you uh, test it and everything, everybody's on Facebook, we tested it multiple times, it worked fine. Now I couldn't figure it out. But we got it, so we're online, we'll see how it works tonight, all right? So that's been my day, IT department, other jobs, other jobs included with the pastor, so... We got some special music this evening, um, and we're continuing on our worship series. Um, tonight, we look at Witnesses to Christ. We look at Pontius Pilate, and we all know the role that Pontius Pilate had, but we'll, we'll, dig, we'll dig into his viewpoint of the, of the events that happened that week with Christ. So with that, let's begin with our first song. Please stand as you are able. We begin our worship this evening in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, we meet the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. Pilate condemns Jesus to death by a crucifixion. Pilate tries to release Jesus, but the crowd demands Barabbas. Pilate washes his hands of Jesus' blood. But Pilate is still guilty. Pilate caves to blackmail. Pilate cares more about keeping his position than he does about executing an innocent man. Pilate can, can proclaim his own innocence and justify himself all he wants. He is still guilty. He is still a selfish sinner with a hardened heart who is complicit in the death of not only an innocent man, but of the sinless Son of God. We might be tempted to point a finger at Pilate to justify ourselves, but truth be told, we too struggle with hardened hearts. Still, our Heavenly Father invites us to come to Him with repentant hearts and seek His forgiveness. Together we confess, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against You on what we have done and in all that we have failed to do. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. We do not seek to wash our hands of these sins, Lord, but we seek your forgiveness. We seek your washing and renewal through the blood of Christ. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son Jesus to die and rise for our forgiveness and our salvation as a called and ordained servant of the crucified and risen Lord. And by his authority alone, I therefore forgive all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are washed clean and forgiven by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. We continue with Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit with men of falsehoods, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices, and those right hands are full of bribes. But as for me... I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great assembly, I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel, the 11th chapter. Therefore say, thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And when they come there, they will be removed from it, all its detestable things and all its abominations. And I will give them one heart, and a new spirit I will put within them. And I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And they may, be, and they may walk in my statutes and keep my rules and obey them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But as for those whose heart goes after their detestable things and their abominations, I will bring their deeds upon their own heads, declares the Lord God. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel and the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but of Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servant for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, Let light shine unto darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. O Lord, have mercy on us. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together crowns of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. 
So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So, then, so when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at the place called the Stone Pavement in the Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. This is the gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated.
us pray. Lord, I ask that you speak through me this evening. Lord, may the words that come from my mouth give honor to you and your holy word. Please guide me with your words. Your word guides us. Your word shows us just how much you love each one of us. Let your word speak to us this Lent season as we journey towards the cross. I ask all of us in the name of our crucified Savior who died and rose for our sins. Amen. Good evening, friends. We're already at our last Wednesday Lent service. Tonight we look at Pilate, Pontius Pilate. French doctor named Gary Payton in 1962 said, wrote these words, I saw a woman today who finally became hard as wood all over. This is the first clinical description of fibrodysplasia office cans progressia, or FOP. The disease slowly and irreversibly turns people into solid bone. The disease imprisons the entire body, front to back, top to bottom. Ligaments, tendons, and muscles solidify as the body becomes as hard as cement. The rogue gene that's been identified for FOP has one goal, slowly harden the body until it's dead. We're in this sermon series that I have thoroughly enjoyed. And tonight we're looking at Pontius Pilate. Pilate is one of the most notorious people in history. If Pilate's name was announced at a baseball game, the crowd would probably boo, right? If he got announced. The Apostles' Creed includes the word, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. You see this night in this reading we just had, Pilate grasped for straws. He's caught between a rock and a hard place. Instead of doing what's right, Pilate has Jesus' flesh ripped, shredded, torn, dressed in purple, and a crown of thorns is put on his head. Then Then he brings Jesus out before the crowd and says, Behold the man. Here is the man, flesh, flesh and blood, flesh and blood and heart, flesh and blood and heart, and beaten body. This is also God we're talking about. The God who gets crucified, the God who bleeds, the God who dies, the God who is buried, the God who did it all for us. Jesus is God in the flesh. You see, Pontius Pilate had an acute case of spiritual FOP. Only in Pilate's case, the gene went straight to his heart. Front to back, top to bottom. You see, spiritual FOP has one goal. Slowly harden our hearts until we're spiritually dead. But we don't notice notice it at first, do we? At first, our priorities are just a little mixed up. And then very slowly, before we know it, we stop praying. We stop repenting. We stop trusting Jesus. And then the day comes when words such as Jesus, Holy Communion, Bible study, baptism, worship, Easter, and salvation have no impact on us whatsoever. That's because spiritual FOP has one goal. Slowly harden our hearts until we're spiritually dead. Pilate knows it. According to a Latin inscription that was found in 1961 on the Mediterranean coast, Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of Judea for 10 years, from A.D. 26 to 36. Pilate was from a middle-class family, That's an important point. Don't forget that. He was from a middle class family. Pontius Pilate was was, was in the Roman army in Germany. One year while he was on leave in Rome, he married an upper class Roman named Claudia Procula. Well, Claudia just happened to be the granddaughter of Caesar Augustus. 
the Roman go- emperor. The granddaughter of this, the granddaughter of Caesar Augustus, the Roman Empire. Pilate was in, didn't he? He definitely married up. Because of this connection, Pontius Pilate got a position he would have never gotten any other way. And what did Pilate get? He was governor of Judea. That was his post. So the posse, led by Judas Iscariot, arrests Jesus on Thursday night. Jesus stands trial before Annas, Caiaphas, and finally before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Supreme Court. And they accuse Jesus of blasphemy. Because blasphemy was punishable by death. But there's one problem, though. The Jews can condemn the man to death, but they can't carry it out. Before Jesus can be executed, the Jews must get whose consent? Pilate. That's his part. Famously for the ages, that's his part. And that's what John wrote for us. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They brought Jesus to the Roman fortress Antonia. It was about the sixth hour, 6 a.m. And they were all there. The chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, all of them. And they have Jesus right where they want him, finally. And soon they're going to have Pilate right where they want him. So Pilate asked a few routine questions. What was this man, what has this man done wrong? The Jews don't directly answer him, if you notice. Why? Because there's no Roman law against blasphemy. The Jews can't say, this man claims to be the Messiah because Pilate would have just waved his hands of it and that would have been it. After all, Roman history tells us that Pilate didn't care for the Jews. Pilate didn't understand the Jews. And Pilate didn't waste time in religious debates with the Jews. Pilate's heart was becoming harder by the minute. Pilate questioned Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? The all-important word here for us is king. Because it means two things. To the Jews, it means Messiah. And to the Romans, like Pilate, it means military ruler. Jesus answers Pilate, You say that I am a king. In his answer, it means this. Yes, I'm a king. But not the kind of king you're thinking about. See, the chief priests want to confuse Pilate into thinking that Jesus is a revolutionary leader and a threat to Rome. But it doesn't work because Jesus tells Pilate, my kingdom's not of this world. Then he tells Pilate, everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate cynically asks, what is truth? Pilate's heart is becoming as hard as cement. Pilate has Jesus scourged, just short of death. 39 times they hit Jesus. But the crowd wants more. They want Christ killed. So the Jews play their trump card. They say to Pilate, if you release this man, you are not a friend of Caesar. Pilate knows exactly what they mean. The Caesar, the king at this time, was Tiberius. And at this time, he was sick. And Tiberius was known as always being suspicious and very, very, very violent. Suetonius, a Roman historian, tells us that Tiberius could turn on his underlings in a second. And he was savage. See, Tiberius wouldn't like getting news about a riot from Judea especially from Judea's governor, who is only appointed because he's married to Caesar's granddaughter. You see, the Jews blackmail Pilate. Pure and simple. And it worked. If the, if the choice had been between Jesus and the Jews, Pilate would have let Jesus go. 
But that's not how the Jewish leaders frame the issue. Their blackmail makes it a choice between Jesus and Rome. And that's Pilate's predicament. The blackmail makes it a choice between Jesus and Rome. You see, people will do many things to save their job, to save their status, their reputation. People will do many things to save their skin. And Pilate's going to have an innocent man crucified. Pilate asked, should I crucify your king? This king isn't a military type looking for battle. No. This king is the suffering and bleeding type. He is the king who cleanses sin-stained hearts. The king who heals deep brokenness. The king who calls us out of darkness and into marvelous life. The king who is going to triumph over death. The king who knows the exact place and time of his execution. And he still goes there anyway. For all of us. The chief priest answers Pilate, We have no king but Caesar. Things are about to get out of hands. It's tense. A Jewish riot would have ended Pilate's political career. So he caves in. Pilate has Jesus executed. Nailed to a cross by his hands and feet. Lifted up to hang. Suspended between heaven and earth. Why did Pilate do that? His hard heart had become as hard as stone. You see Pilate's pattern? What's in it for me? That's what we see throughout John 18 and 19. What's in it for me? That's Pilate's pattern. Pilate is climbing the ladder of success. Pilate cares only for himself and is trashing anyone who gets in his way. And that's a pattern that we can follow more often than we care to even admit. We're all finally not much different than Pilate in some ways. Because we say, what's in it for me? And when we do, it's a recipe for a hard heart. And a hard heart is like a wrecking ball. It can end marriages. It can finish out families and friends. Spiritual FOP can kill us. One of John, the Apostle John's most amazing statements is, the Word became flesh. You see, the Word didn't change into flesh. It didn't morph into flesh. It didn't transition into flesh. Because if the Word had changed or morphed or transitioned into flesh, He would no longer be God. But remaining God, He became as we were. Remaining as He was God, Christ became as we are, flesh. Cicero of Alexander wrote this about Pilate. We cannot acquit Pilate of his complicity in the iniquity of those who committed this crime against Christ. Pilate shared their responsibility inasmuch as when he might have delivered and rescued him from the madness of his murderers. He did not merely refrain from leasing, releasing him, but even gave him up to be crucified. Is your heart hard? Is it callous? Can it be insensitive? Can it be indifferent? It can even be dead, can it? Well, the good news is it's not too late. You see, a new heart cost us nothing. It cost Jesus everything. For us, he walked the Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrows. On the way to Calvary, Jesus gave up his back to be whipped 39 times. His face to those who wanted to beat him and hit him. His head where they placed the thorns upon him. And he gave up his body and his blood for the life of the world. 
He did it all for us. To give us a new heart. You see, your Heavenly Father will create in you a new heart. A new heart. A heart that is spiritually alive. He'll mold your stony heart back into life. This is His promise for you in Jesus Christ. In Ezekiel I read tonight, I will give them one heart. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. God will take away our stony, stubborn heart and give us a tender, responsive heart. So what does that mean? It means our heart will beat again. It will beat again. Amen? Let us pray. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, who gave it all so that we may have eternity. Amen. This time the ushers will come forward and collect the tithes and offerings. Please rise for prayer if you Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. We pray for all who seek the truth, that they may find the truth in Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all whose hearts are hardened by sin, that their hearts may be softened and their desires turn to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for our president, our vice president, our governor, that they may lead our nation and state, seeking truth, liberty, and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all senators and members of the House of Representatives, that they may represent their constituents well, seeking not their own enhancement and advancement, but the good of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the justices of our Supreme Court and all judges throughout the nation, that the Holy Spirit would guide them to judge with wisdom and clarity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have been deceived, whether by their own foolishness or by others, that God might deliver them from their enslavement to lies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are sick, injured, and recovering from surgery, that God might provide healing in His time and in His way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who've lost loved ones recently, that they might be comforted by the power and hope of the resurrection and eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God, from who comes all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servant, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commands, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, we ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We boldly pray the prayer our Father taught, that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated.